Onchocerciasis, Wikipedia article audio. Onchocerciasis, also known as river blindness, is a disease caused by infection with the parasitic worm Onchocerca volvulus. Symptoms include severe itching, bumps under the skin, and blindness. It is the second most common cause of blindness due to infection, after trachoma. Signs and Symptoms Matsadi Reaction Nodding Disease Classification Cause Life Cycle Prevention Treatment Antibiotics Ivermectin Epidemiology History Society and Culture Research the parasite worm is spread by the bites of a black fly of the simulium type. Usually, many bites are required before infection occurs. These flies live near rivers, hence the common name of the disease. Once inside a person, the worms create larvae that make their way out to the skin, where they can infect the next black fly that bites the person. There are a number of ways to make the diagnosis, including, placing a biopsy of the skin in normal saline and watching for the larva to come out, looking in the eye for larvae, and looking within the bumps under the skin for adult worms. A vaccine against the disease does not exist. Prevention is by avoiding being bitten by flies. This may include the use of insect repellent and proper clothing. Other efforts include those to decrease the fly population by spraying insecticides. Efforts to eradicate the disease by treating entire groups of people twice a year are ongoing in a number of areas of the world. Treatment of those infected is with the medication Ivermectin every 6 to 12 months. This treatment kills the larvae but not the adult worms. The antibiotic doxycycline weakens the worms by killing an associated bacterium called Wolbachia, and is recommended by some as well. The lumps under the skin may also be removed by surgery. About 15.5 million people are infected with river blindness. Approximately 0.8 million have some amount of loss of vision from the infection. Most infections occur in sub-Saharan Africa, although cases have also been reported in Yemen and isolated areas of Central and South America. In 1915, the physician Rodolfo Robles first linked the worm to eye disease. It is listed by the World Health Organization as a neglected tropical disease. Adult worms remain in subcutaneous nodules limiting access to the host's immune system. Microfilarii, in contrast, are able to induce intense inflammatory responses, especially upon their death. Walbachia species have been found to be endosymbionts of ovolvulus adults and microfilarii, and are thought to be the driving force behind most of ovolvulus morbidity. Dying microfilarii have been recently discovered to release Wolbachia surface protein that activates TLR2 and TLR4, triggering innate immune responses and producing the inflammation and its associated morbidity. The severity of illness is directly proportional to the number of infected microfilarii and the power of the resultant inflammatory response. Skin involvement typically consists of intense itching swelling, and inflammation. A grading system has been developed to categorize the degree of skin involvement. Ocular involvement provides the common name associated with onchocerciasis, river blindness, and may involve any part of the eye from conjunctiva and cornea to uvea and posterior segment, including the retina and optic nerve. The microfilarii migrate to the surface of the cornea. Punctate keratitis occurs in the infected area. 
This clears up as the inflammation subsides. However, if the infection is chronic, sclerosing keratitis can occur, making the affected area become opaque. Over time, the entire cornea may become opaque, thus leading to blindness. Some evidence suggests the effect on the cornea is caused by an immune response to bacteria present in the worms. The skin is itchy, with severe rashes permanently damaging patches of skin. The Matsadi reaction, first described in 1948, is a symptom complex seen in patients after undergoing treatment of onchocerciasis with the medication diethylcarbamazine. Matsadi reactions can be life-threatening, and are characterized by fever, urticaria, swollen and tender lymph nodes, tachycardia, hypotension, arthralgias, edema, and abdominal pain that occur within seven days of treatment of microfilariasis. The phenomenon is so common when this is used that this drug is the basis of a skin patch test used to confirm that diagnosis. The drug patch is placed on the skin, and if the patient is infected with ovulvulus microfilaria, localized pruritus and urticaria are seen at the application site. This is an unusual form of epidemic epilepsy associated with onchocerciasis although definitive link has not been established. This syndrome was first described in Tanzania by Louise Gillicall a Norwegian psychiatric doctor in Tanzanian practice, during the 1960s. It occurs most commonly in Uganda and South Sudan. It manifests itself in previously healthy 5-15 year old children, is often triggered by eating or low temperatures and is accompanied by cognitive impairment. Seizures occur frequently and may be difficult to control. The electroencephalogram is abnormal but cerebrospinal fluid and magnetic resonance imaging are normal or show nonspecific changes. If there are abnormalities on the MRI they are usually present in the hippocampus. Polymerase chain reaction testing of the CSF does not show the presence of the parasite. Onchocerciasis causes different kinds of skin changes which vary in different geographic regions, it may be divided into the following phases or types, 444-41. Additionally, the various skin changes associated with onchocerciasis may be described as follows, 440. The cause is onchocercovolvulus. The life of the parasite can be traced through the black fly and the human hosts in the following steps. Various control programs aim to stop onchocerciasis from being a public health problem. The first was the onchocerciasis control program, which was launched in 1974, and at its peak, covered 30 million people in 11 countries. Through the use of larvicide spraying of fast-flowing rivers to control black fly populations, and from 1988 onwards, the use of ivermectin to treat infected people, the OCP eliminated onchocerciasis as a public health problem. The OCP, a joint effort of the World Health Organization, the World Bank, the United Nations Development Program, and the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, was considered to be a success, and came to an end in 2002. Continued monitoring ensures onchocerciasis cannot reinvade the area of the OCP. In 1995, the African Programme for Onchocerciasis Control began covering another 19 countries, mainly relying upon the use of ivermectin. Its goal is to set up a community-directed supply of ivermectin for those who are infected. In these ways, transmission has declined. In 2015, WHO was facilitating launch of an elimination program in Yemen. In 1992, 
the Onco Circiasis Elimination Program for the Americas, which also relies on ivermectin, was launched. On July 29, 2013, the Pan American Health Organization announced that after 16 years of efforts, Colombia had become the first country in the world to eliminate Onchocerciasis. In September 2015, the Onchocerciasis Elimination Program for the Americas announced that Onchocerciasis only remained in a remote region on the border of Brazil and Venezuela. The area is home to the Yanomami indigenous people. The first countries to receive verification of elimination were Colombia in 2013, Ecuador in 2014, and Mexico in 2015. Guatemala has submitted a request for verification. The key factor in elimination is mass administration of the antiparasitic drug ivermectin. The initial projection was that the disease would be eliminated from remaining foci in the Americas by 2012. No vaccine to prevent onchocerciasis infection in humans is available. A vaccine to prevent onchocerciasis infection for cattle is in Phase 3 trials. Cattle injected with a modified and weakened form of Ookinji larvae have developed very high levels of protection against infection. The findings suggest that it could be possible to develop a vaccine that protects people against river blindness using a similar approach. Unfortunately, a vaccine to protect humans is still many years off. In mass drug administration programs, the treatment for onchocerciasis is ivermectin. Infected people can be treated with two doses of ivermectin, six months apart, repeated every three years. The drug paralyses and kills the microfilarii causing fever, itching, and possibly edema, arthritis and lymphadenopathy. Intense skin itching is eventually relieved, and the progression towards blindness is halted. In addition, while the drug does not kill the adult worms, it does prevent them for a limited time from producing additional offspring. The drug therefore prevents both morbidity and transmission for up to several months. Ivermectin treatment is particularly effective because it only needs to be taken once or twice a year, needs no refrigeration, and has a wide margin of safety with the result that it has been widely given by minimally trained community health workers. For the treatment of individuals, doxycycline is used to kill the Wolbachia bacteria that live in adult worms. This adjunct therapy has been shown to significantly lower microfilarial loads in the host, and may kill the adult worms, due to the symbiotic relationship between Wolbachia and the worm. In four separate trials over 10 years with various dosing regimens of doxycycline for individualized treatment, doxycycline was found to be effective in sterilizing the female worms and reducing their numbers over a period of four to six weeks. Research on other antibiotics, such as rifampicin, has shown it to be effective in animal models at reducing Wolbachia both as an alternative and as an adjunct to doxycycline. However, doxycycline treatment requires daily dosing for at least four to six weeks, making it more difficult to administer in the affected areas. Ivermectin kills the parasite by interfering with the nervous system and muscle function, in particular, by enhancing inhibitory neurotransmission. The drug binds to and activates glutamate-gated chloride channels. These channels, present in neurons and myocytes, are not invertebrate-specific, but are protected in vertebrates from the action of ivermectin by the blood-brain barrier. Ivermectin is thought to irreversibly activate these channel receptors in the worm, eventually causing an inhibitory postsynaptic potential. 
the chance of a future action potential occurring in synapses between neurons decreases and the nematodes experience flaccid paralysis followed by death. Ivermectin is directly effective against the larval stage microfilarii of ovalvulus, they are paralyzed and can be killed by eosinophils and macrophages. It does not kill adult females, but does cause them to cease releasing microfilarii, perhaps by paralyzing the reproductive tract. Ivermectin is very effective in reducing microfilarial load and reducing number of punctate opacities in individuals with onchocerciasis. About 37 million people are infected with this parasite, about 300,000 of those had been permanently blinded. As of 2008, about 99% of onchocerciasis cases occurred in Africa. Onchocerciasis is currently endemic in 30 African countries, Yemen, and isolated regions of South America. Over 85 million people live in endemic areas, and half of these reside in Nigeria. Another 120 million people are at risk for contracting the disease. Due to the vector's breeding habitat, the disease is more severe along the major rivers in the northern and central areas of the continent, and severity declines in villages farther from rivers. Onchocerciasis was eliminated in the northern focus in Chiapas, Mexico, and the focus in Oaxaca, Mexico, where Onchocerca volvulus existed, was determined, after several years of treatment with ivermectin, as free of the transmission of the parasite. According to a 2002 WHO report, Onchocerciasis has not caused a single death but its global burden is 987,000 disability-adjusted life years. The severe pruritus alone accounts for 60% of the Dallas. Infection reduces the host's immunity and resistance to other diseases, which results in an estimated reduction in life expectancy of 13 years. Oncocerca originated in Africa and was exported to the Americas by the slave trade, as part of the Colombian exchange that introduced other old world diseases such as yellow fever into the New World. Findings of a phylogenetic study in the mid-90s are consistent with an introduction to the New World in this manner. DNA sequences of savanna and rainforest strains in Africa differ, while American strains are identical to savanna strains in Western Africa. The microfilarial parasite that causes the disease was first identified in 1874 by an Irish naval surgeon, John O'Neill, who was seeking to identify the cause of a common skin disease along the west coast of Africa, known as Cra Cra. Rudolf Luckert, a German zoologist, later examined specimens of the same filarial worm sent from Africa by a German missionary doctor in 1890 and named the organism Filaria volvulus. Rodolfo Robles and Rafael Pacheco in Guatemala first mentioned the ocular form of the disease in the Americas about 1915. They described a tropical worm infection with adult Oncocerca that included inflammation of the skin especially the face, and eyes. The disease, commonly called the filarial blinding disease, and later referred to as Robles disease, was common among coffee plantation workers. Manifestations included subcutaneous nodules, anterior eye lesions, and dermatitis. Robles sent specimens to Emile Brumpt, a French parasitologist, who named it Ocicutions in 1919, indicating the parasite caused blindness. The disease was also reported as being common in Mexico. By the early 1920s, it was generally agreed that the filaria in Africa and Central America were morphologically indistinguishable and the same as that described by O'Neill 50 years earlier. Robles hypothesized that the vector of the disease was the day-biting black fly, 
Simulium. Scottish physician Donald Blacklock of the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine confirmed this mode of transmission in studies in Sierra Leone. Blacklock's experiments included the reinfection of simulium flies exposed to portions of the skin of infected subjects on which nodules were present, which led to elucidation of the life cycle of the Oncocerca parasite. Blacklock and others could find no evidence of eye disease in Africa. Jean Hissette, a Belgian ophthalmologist, discovered in 1930 that the organism was the cause of a river blindness in the Belgian Congo. Some of the patients reported seeing tangled threads or worms in their vision, which were microfilarii moving freely in the aqueous humor of the anterior chamber of the eye. Blacklock and Strong had thought the African worm did not affect the eyes, but Hisset reported that 50% of patients with onchocerciasis near the Songkuru River in the Belgian Congo had eye disease and 20% were blind. Hisset isolated the microfilarii from an enucleated eye and described the typical chorioretinal scarring, later called the Hisset Ridley fundus after another ophthalmologist, Harold Ridley who also made extensive observations on onchocerciasis patients in northwest Ghana, publishing his findings in 1945. Ridley first postulated that the disease was brought by the slave trade. The international scientific community was initially skeptical of Hisset's findings, but they were confirmed by the Harvard African Expedition of 1934, led by Richard P. Strong an American physician of tropical medicine. Since 1987, ivermectin has been provided free of charge for use in humans by Merck through the Mectazin Donation Program. The MDP works together with ministries of health and non-governmental development organizations, such as the World Health Organization, to provide free ivermectin to those who need it in endemic areas. Acute papular onchodermatitis scattered pruritic papules, chronic papular onchodermatitis larger papules, resulting in hyperpigmentation, lichen ifid onchodermatitis hyperpigmented papules and plagues with edema, lymphadenopathy, pruritus, and common secondary bacterial infections, skin atrophy loss of elasticity, the skin resembles tissue paper lizard skin appearance, depigmentation leopard skin appearance, usually on anterior lower leg, glaucoma effect eyes malfunction, begin to see shadows or nothing. In 2015 William C. Campbell and Satoshi Mura were CEO awarded half of that year's Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for the discovery of the Avermectin family of compounds the forerunner of ivermectin. The latter has come to decrease the occurrence of lymphatic filariasis and onchocerciasis. Uganda's government, working with the Carter Center River Blindness Program since 1996, switched strategies for distribution of mectazin. The male-dominated volunteer distribution system had failed to take advantage of traditional kinship structures and roles. The program switched in 2014 from village health teams to community distributors, primarily selecting women with the goal of assuring that everyone in the circle of their family and friends received river blindness information and mectazin. Animal models for the disease are somewhat limited, as the parasite only lives in primates, but there are close parallels. Litomosoides sigmodontis which will naturally infect cotton rats, has been found to fully develop in BALB slash C mice. Oncocerca okanji, the closest relative of ovalvulus, lives in intradermal cavities in cattle, and is also spread by black flies. Both systems are useful, but not exact, animal models. A study of 2,501 people in Ghana showed the prevalence rate doubled between 2000 and 2005 despite treatment, 
suggesting the parasite is developing resistance to the drug. A clinical trial of another antiparasitic agent, moxidectin, began on July 1, 2009. A Cochrane review compared outcomes of people treated with ivermectin alone versus doxycycline plus ivermectin. While there were no differences in most vision-related outcomes between the two treatments, there was low-quality evidence suggesting treatment with doxycycline plus ivermectin showed improvement in iridocyclitis and punctate keratitis, over those treated with ivermectin alone.